Now we're going to build on the previous video and look at some more examples of how we can use functions within functions and how we can use dot sort. So here I have an array of hotel objects. An array of hotel objects. Each one of these is one hotel, one object with a name property, a rooms property, a booked property, that's the number of rooms which are booked, a price property, price per night, and a rating property. Okay? So we've seen how to sort arrays of strings. Dot sort simply alphabetizes them. And we've seen how to sort arrays of numbers. Dot sort with function AB, return A minus B numerically orders them in ascending order but how could we use dot sort on an array of objects how could we use dot sort on an array of objects if I try this in my console hotels which is my array dot sort then nothing changes their order remains exactly the same so that hasn't done anything. Part of the reason for that is I need to decide how I want to sort these objects. Do I want them to be alphabetical by name? Do I want them to be <clears throat> in terms of price from least to greatest? Or in terms of customer rating from least to greatest? I need to determine how I want to sort this array of objects, which means I need to decide on a property by which to sort them. If I'm going to sort them by name, it's probably going to be alphabetical. If I'm going to sort them by rating, it's probably going to be like sorting an array of numbers. Okay, So that's step one. I need to decide how I want to sort them. And let's go ahead and start trying that. Hotels, let's say we're going to start sort by rating. We're going to sort them by rating. Hotels.sort. And because we're sorting numbers here, we know we're going to need this function a, b, return a minus b in some fashion, right? But where in here can we tell the browser what property we are using to sort? What happens if I just plug this into my console? Still no change. No change in their order. The reason is because function a b, return a minus b, is looking for two numbers as arguments. Two numbers. A and B are going to be two numbers. So real quick, why don't I throw a console log in here to show us A minus B. See exactly what A minus B is. Okay, and I get this NAN four times. NAN is an um, NAN means not a number. It means the browser was expecting numbers, did not receive numbers, not a number. Okay, so A minus B evaluates to not a number, which means this function is currently not performing the way that it should be. We need some way to tell this function that we want to sort by specifically the rating property. What's happening right now is A and B are two objects in the hotel's array. So it is plugging in two whole objects for A and for B. So what if I tried something like this? Hotels.sort, function a, b, return a, which I know is a hotel object, dot rating. 
minus b dot rating let's go ahead and see if that works and then I'm going to console.log hotels after this line of code Looks like my browser is a little locked up. All right, there we go, finally. So we have an array returned to us, and the array is in a very different order. Look at that. Seaside, then Gardens, Quay, Ranch, Valley. And look at the ratings. The ratings are all sorted in ascending order. It's perfect, that's exactly what we want. So in this way, we have managed to um, understand exactly what a and b are going to be in this function. We're running it on an array, so a and b are both going to be items in this array. And we want to sort this whole array by one property of each object. So we need to specify how we want to compare a and b, how we want to use a and b and whatever a minus b needs to uh, evaluate to, it needs to be a number. So an object minus an object will not evaluate to a number. An object's rating property minus another object's rating property will evaluate to a number and allow this function to work. So, so far so good. We've, we're, we've been able to um, cause this array to sort numerically by rating. What if we needed to sort it alphabetically by name? Do you think we could just plug name in here? Or are we going to get not a number again? We get not a number, and the array is unchanged. Okay, and that's because the name property of each of these objects is a string. You can't subtract a string from a string. The browser is going to expect numbers, and it will not receive numbers. So, I'm going to show you how you could handle a custom sort function for alphabetical order. Okay. You might think, well, can't I just delete this and we're good? No, because now it's trying to sort an array of objects. You only want it to sort this array by the strings contained in the name properties. Okay, so this is only going to work if hotels were nothing but quay, seaside, valley, gardens, ranch, but it's not. It's not an array of strings. It's an array of objects. So you do need a custom sort function in there. And the way we're going to need to handle this is actually with an if statement. If a.name is greater than b.name, 
return one. Else return minus one. Let's try that out and then I'll explain it. Okay, and now they're organized in alphabetical valley. G, Q, R, S, V. They've been um, ordered alphabetically. So this is a custom sort function that we can use to access specifically the property of an object if we're trying to sort an array of objects by one of those properties. If this doesn't seem useful to you, think about if this was a checkout site for a travel, a travel site or a hotel booking app and we're looking for hotels in Carmel Valley, we pull up five of them we get the gardens, the quay, the ranch, the seaside, and the valley. And we want to sort them. We want to see which one has the highest price, which one has the highest rating, which one has the, well, we probably want to see which one has the lowest price, um, which one has rooms available. Or maybe you just want to sort them by name. Maybe these objects have a distance from your search area, and so you want to you want to filter or sort them by distance. Okay, this is all we're doing here. We're simply sorting this array of hotels based on a particular piece of data unique to all of these objects. And this function works for sorting by name by strings contained inside the object. But let's take it one step further. Let's jump back to sorting by, let's do price this time. And let's ask ourselves, will this function, which works in, in a different way, still successfully sort an array of objects by property if that property is a number. Okay, we know this works on strings. Will it work if price is a number, if that property is a number? Let's see. Look at that. 220, 250, 270, 350, 400. The answer is yes. The answer, this is, is um, this is a, 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 an even more custom sorting function that will work for any property in an object except you know an object inside an object or an array inside an object if you're getting that complicated um, you need to be more involved with your code to make it work the way you'd like but if we just have an object with a bunch of properties and we want to sort a number of these objects in an array by one of those properties this function will do that job for us and the way it works is it returns a 1 if the property in A is greater than the property B, property in B, or it returns a minus 1 if the property in A is less than the price uh, than the property in B. So if property of A is greater than property of B, return 1. And the computer knows what that means. It knows that it means okay. This object this object's property is bigger than this object's property. And it does that for every two objects in our array. Figuring out exactly which one belongs at the very beginning, which one belongs at the end, and what order they all belong in, in the middle. Simply by using these ones and negative ones. This function allows us to do that. It's perfect for sorting objects by properties. Now, let's see if we can find a more dynamic way to do this. A, nor, a more dynamic and a more functional way to do this. Because right now, let me get rid of this, we're telling, we're telling this function exactly how to sort this array of objects. We're telling it, use the price property. But what if we couldn't do that? 
What if the property that we wanted to sort these, this array by was determined by the user, which would make sense. Which would make sense. We need to figure out a way to turn this into some sort of variable that we can feed into this function within a function and connect it to the front end so a user can sort this array however they'd like. So if you want to give that a try on your own, take a couple minutes and think it through. Give it a try and then come back and in the next video we're going to solve this issue.